Time now for a science news update. Joining us is our regular Pulse contributor, Carrie Grant. She is an associate editor at The Scientist, and in that role, she reviews a lot of studies every week, and she keeps us posted on the latest. This week, Big Bang, Ancient Moss, and Heart Tissue. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Mikan. Let's start with the Big Bang, I guess. What's happening there? Well, this was big news in the Big Bang field this week. Scientists reported evidence that helps to describe what happened immediately after the Big Bang. So we're talking a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of a second after the initial explosion that went on to create our universe. So, you know, everything explodes and starts spreading outward. And there's this theory called inflation in which the expansion of the universe speeds up for a very brief period and then it slows down. It keeps expanding, but the rate of the expansion slows down. If inflation happened, it would have created ripples in space-time, kind of like ripples in water that then grow and spread out throughout the universe. And scientists have been looking for these. These ripples are gravitational waves, and they finally detected them using a telescope at the South Pole. So the results help us understand what happened right after the Big Bang. Not everybody has agreed with this idea of inflation, and the results still need to be verified. Some are not entirely convinced just yet, but a lot of cosmologists are extremely excited about these results. And why did it take so long to detect those ripples? I guess it's really, really difficult to find them. They had expected that the signal would actually be extremely, extremely small, but what they were able to detect was a bit larger. So that's why people are excited by these results, because I guess the signal is a bit more convincing than they had even anticipated. And what does this ripple, how does it manifest itself? What are you measuring? In this case, they're looking at the cosmic microwave background. This is leftover heat from billions of years ago. And what they were looking at was the orientation of the microwaves, the polarization of them. And what they saw was a slight, they called it a curl in the orientation of the of the microwaves. And that is indicative of the gravitational waves kind of passing through the cosmic microwave background. And what what is this setting the stage for? What's next in Big Bang research? I think it will be to verify these findings. In science, you always want to have confirmation from other groups, other telescopes. You want to have independent scientists look at your data. So I think that's the next step. Let's move on to ancient moss that was brought back to life. That's right. Scientists have revived moss that was frozen in ice for 1,500 years. They pulled ice out of an island near the Antarctic and brought it into the laboratory, warmed it up, gave it some light, and much to their surprise, this moss came back to life. This really shatters records for how long a complex organism has remained dormant in ice. So recently people have revived a 30,000 year old virus from Siberia and other microbes people have brought back to life after a very, very long period. But for more complex life, plants and animals, I think the previous record had only been a few decades. So this was really exciting. So what are they going to do with this moss now? <laughs> grow it? <laughs> grow it in their yards? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I'm not sure what they're going to actually do with the moss. I think it helps researchers understand how organisms are able to survive through ice ages. So instead of having to rely upon getting off to a warmer region, perhaps they can stay frozen in ice and and sort of hunker down until the ice melts back. And finally, your last pick for this week is making heart tissue that actually beats. Yes, there's been quite a few advances this year in making artificial heart tissue. In this latest case, this week, scientists have engineered heart tissue that can beat, and then they generated it in the laboratory, and then were able to implant it into a mouse. This is an advance on the road to regenerative medicine. So if you have had a heart attack and you have damage in your heart, for example, you'd want to repair that, and this is an advance in that field. It's not the first time that beating heart cells have been created in the lab. As I said earlier this year, a group in San Francisco uh, took skin cells. They altered which genes were active in the cells and then turned them into beating heart cells. But what I found interesting about this latest advance was the scaffold that they grew these heart cells on called a hydrogel. 
and it's supposed to be very elastic and durable so that it could perhaps be implanted and act as like a tissue patch. And they used a 3D printer to etch little grooves into the hydrogel, then seed that with the cells so that they grow into the proper architecture. So are we getting closer to perhaps even making a whole heart that way or other organs? That's the goal, and certainly these advances are getting us closer to that point. I will point out, though, this was all done in mice. And so we're not at the stage where we can start, start experimenting with implanting these things into humans. There has to be a lot more research done before that. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Mikan.